Some live fast and die young. Others don't. My, uh, my concentration span is very short. What's that call that? Whatever. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 musicians whose drug use probably should have killed them. You could also say I've snorted half of Peru, but... <laughs> you know, uh, it's what we did. For this list, we've chosen musicians who battled their demons for longer than humanly possible and have made it through to the other side, or at least to older age. I suppose a lot of people might be frightened to be me, but I'm quite happy to be. Number 10, Iggy Pop. Today, he's got a lust for life, but through the 70s, he nursed a heroin habit. Arr! even surfaced claiming the Stooges sprayed blood from used needles onto their apartment's walls. Pop's inability to stand up on stage finally forced him into a mental institution to get clean, though David Bowie smuggled him drugs. Eventually, Iggy got sober, and now he's as fit and shirtless as ever. Number 9, Eric Clapton. He sang about cocaine, but that's not the only drug Slohan fell victim to. His $16,000 a week heroin habit almost drove him to suicide, but he never did it because then he'd have to stop drinking. I had a couple of rock bottoms which just uh, brought me to my knees. Not that they were any worse than anyone else's, it's just that at some point I hit, you know, a wall. After withdrawing from his career, Enduring car crashes, health problems, and being so drunk he'd perform lying down, Clapton finally reached that crossroads, sobered up, and founded a rehab center in Antigua. Number 8. Slash. Now he's clean and doesn't even smoke cigarettes. Then he had an appetite for destruction. Slash struggled with a heroin addiction before GNR's debut album, and Axl Rose threatened to quit if he didn't sober up. By 2001, Slash was diagnosed with a heart problem and given only a short time left to live. But therapy and a pacemaker saved his life, and today he has no regrets. But it catches up with you at some point. You don't see it coming. There's an invisible line that you cross. Number 7, Steven Tyler. He didn't think he dressed like that sober. Tyler and partner in crime Joe Perry were the toxic twins, but his habit of keeping Jack and Cokes or just playing cocaine on stage prompted multiple rehab stints. It gets, takes you into another state, which isn't the original state that you wanted to be in, so it rapes you. It rapes you of all that you, that you wanted to be in the first place. In 2009, Tyler fell off stage after falling off the wagon, and though he claims it boosted his creativity, the demon of screaming confirms that drugs damaged his relationships, cost him millions, and gave him hepatitis C. Snorting that, I fell off the stage. Snorting Lunesta? Of course. It's a thing you get to go to sleep. You're snorting it? Yes, I was. That shows you what kind of a drug addict I was. Whoa. Only the finest for me. Number six, Brian Wilson. Wilson needed more than just good vibrations. Pot, hash, LSD, cocaine, and more contributed to the Beach Boys' biggest hits. The cocaine was a beautiful high. I mean, I could write songs, I'd get an elated state, but the come down was so god awful. I mean, it was so. How long did it last, this high that you. Two had? hours. You got, you got at least two hours of a high, then you got another hour and a half of nothing but garbage. Wilson's drug, alcohol, and food addictions also caused his absences from music and the deterioration of his voice and mental health. <laughs> Stints in the loony bin, assistance from a controversial therapist, and Rhonda didn't help. However, he made it through, and now Brian's back. I wish they all Number five, let me kill Mister. But that's the way I like it, baby. I don't want to live forever. After roadieing and scoring drugs for Hendrix, and being fired from Hawkwind for doing the wrong drugs. Lemmy formed pioneering metal group Motorhead, which, by the way, is a euphemism for Speed Freak. I said that it made me a better person for having taken it. 
But if you think you can do without drugs, go ahead and do without them, you know, because it's a very expensive hobby. <laughs> True to the name, Lemmy consumes speed and acid, and each day he drinks a bottle of whiskey. Buy in bulk, that's my advice. But he's anti-cocaine and heroin. Despite his recent diabetes diagnosis, he's still rocking and partying as hard as ever, unlike many of his contemporaries. Number four, Shane McGowan. He should be the face of anti-drug and anti-drinking campaigns. He lost teeth after bailing during a boozing sesh, puked on fans, tried to eat a Beach Boys CD, was ratted out to police by Sinead O'Connor so he quit heroin, and was forced out of his own band because of his drinking. Somehow he made it past his 30s, and today he's still singing and hitting the pubs. Well, what's it like out there tonight in the crowd? I'm both dr drunk. Number three, Ozzy Osbourne. There's no suit, but Ozzy is Iron Man. For decades, the Prince of Darkness mixed booze with every drug imaginable. No, 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 it's, it's like we, we did, we, uh, what, 16 days ago we got over from Japan. He survived overdoses, being fired from Sabbath, Randy Rhodes' death, and pissing on the Alamo while wearing women's clothes. I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. He snorted ants and chomped heads off bats and doves. Apparently, his DNA makes him capable of withstanding such abuse, and while he may be forgetful, he is alive. Weak signal, that's about all I know. What I know about that old that weak signal. Jack! Can you get this f***ing, this television to work? Number two, Nikki Six. All members of Motley Crue lived the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle. But it was Nikki Six who sank deepest into drugs, specifically heroin. His troubled childhood and addictive personality meant this glam rock bassist had multiple overdoses and near-death experiences. Actually, can you call being declared dead a near-death experience? I had a really bad overdose, ended up in the hospital, came out, shot up again, overdosed again, and it was the next morning I woke up and the light, the light just went on, and it was over. Number one, Keith Richards. the stories, five trials on drug charges, used heroin till the late 70s, quit cocaine after falling out of a tree in 2006, was Johnny Depp's inspiration for Captain Jack Sparrow, snorted his father's ashes. I, honestly, I could not resist. I just scooped him up there, took out a straw, and said, see you, Dad. Richards credits his endurance to high quality drugs and never using more than necessary, whatever that means. Either way, it's not unfair to wonder how this Rolling Stone made it to old age. It's the trick, isn't it? To survive. It's not just about living forever, Jackie. Do you agree with our list? Which musicians are you most surprised are still around? Oh, mama, For more top tens about your favorite artists, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh,